I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about creating raw Ethereum transactions and sending Ether using Go. Before we get started, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and click that notification icon. That way you stay up to date on whenever I post something new on this channel. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, as you can see, I have another project created with a main.go. I've already created an eth client and in this case, I am connecting to a local node, a local test node, in fact, and I'm using Ganache, which is a very popular test node uh, development tool provided by the Truffle team. So as you can see, I've got my Ganache running here, and it's running on localhost or 127.0.0.1. So in order to send Ether over the network, we need a private key and an account to actually sign the transactions that we send to the network. So the first step in doing that is importing a private key. So first, I'm going to take this first account within Ganache and then copy its private key. Then we'll use Go's crypto library to take that private key and convert it to elliptic curve DSA, which is the format that Ethereum uses for all of its uh, private keys and wallets. Next, we want to extract the public key and the Ethereum address from this new account. So to do that, we'll take the private key, use the public function, and pass it to this public key variable, and then we need to cast this public key also to elliptic curve DSA, using public key and then the this is how you cast um, variables to different types in Go. So we cast that into the proper format and then check for errors. Then we can get the Ethereum address using the crypto library and the pub key to address function. And then the next thing we're gonna need is a nonce. And this is the part of an Ethereum transaction that is unique for every transaction given an address. And what the nonce is, it stands for number used only once. And it's something you add to every transaction you push onto the Ethereum network to distinguish it from previous transactions. And this prevents uh, things like replay attacks. So say you send some ether to another address, an attacker can't just take that transaction, send it back to the network and replay it over and over and over just so it can get some more ether or uh, until you run out of ether. So the nonce is unique for every transaction and the easiest way to do that is just increment the nonce um, every time you make a new transaction. And to make it easy to remember the last nonce and then which nonce you're supposed to use for the next transaction, the Go library will actually get the nonce that you need given an address using a helpful function called pending nonce at. So we're going to get the nonce using pending nonce at, pass it a context, and then the address we actually want to get the nonce for. So now that we have the nonce and an account and an address, let's go ahead and start building up this raw transaction. So we're going to start uh, setting up the transaction values. And the first thing we need is the amount of ether we're going to actually send the person in this demo and that's going to be in way so we're going to send five ether and then add 18 zeros onto it and that's how you calculate uh ether to way you just basically add uh 18 zeros to the end of it next we want the gas limit and for standard uh ethereum transactions sending ether to one from one person to another all you need is 21,000 units in gas so we're just going to set that and that's going to have to be a u into 64 and then next we want the gas price and gas price is pretty tricky uh, thankfully the ethereum library has a helpful function uh, called suggested gas price and we're just going to use that rather than trying to calculate the amount of gas we need all right that looks good now we need someone to send the ether to so we're just going to copy this second address right here and save it to this variable to address 
And addresses when you're using this Go Ethereum library actually have to be as a type address. So the easiest way to do that is use this utility, hex to address. So you pass in the address in hex format, and then it'll pipe it out as um, an address type. Every transaction needs a data variable or data parameter. We're not going to pass any extra data in this case, but we're just going to create an empty data variable just because. And then we're going to create a new transaction. And this new transaction function will take a nonce, to address, the value, the gas limit, the gas price, and then the data, which in this case is empty. Once we have that transaction, we need to actually sign that transaction. So we get a sign transaction variable and we use this sign tx function. It's going to take the raw transaction and then a signer. And all that signer is, it's telling the Ethereum library how to actually sign this transaction. So in previous versions of the Ethereum network, there are different ways uh, to sign transactions and blocks. Um, the latest version right now for signing is called Homestead, so we're just going to use a Homestead signer. And then we're going to pass the private key. Lastly, we're going to send the transaction. And we do that with the client.sendTransaction function. We'll print out the details, save it, and when we run it, we get a nifty message back. And if we check Ganache, we'll see that 5 Ether left this first address and has been deposited into this second address. And that's it. That's how you send Ether using Go. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And if you're looking for some uh, content that's maybe not necessarily developer or programming related, go ahead and check out my other channel. Once again, thanks for watching.